Okay. Actually, it occurred to me while you were telling me this, we probably should, for the benefit of the viewers that you have that don't know me. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. Hi. So, <laughs> so we probably should re-edit this to get this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fun. We should introduce ourselves at the top. That's probably a good point. Uh, and you'll have to introduce me to more people than mm -hmm. I'll have to introduce into you since I've got 58 yeah. subscribers and you've got 92,000. Yeah, but you should go first because it's your channel. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this is Dale, my nephew. Nephew. Oh. <laughs> We're okay. just talking about some interesting issues it. around gender. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we could re-edit this. <laughs> or not. <laughs> it's one out of these four. Okay. Or not. Um, this is my niece, Dale. <laughs> In a yeah. Anyway, um, and Dale has a fairly long lived, probably eight years or something. Seven or eight. Yeah, this is the eighth year, I think. Of um, uh, Dale won a an international competition. Ooh. I like to think of it as an audition. <laughs> you know. And and was uh, selected as one of ten to go onto a channel to put up one video a fortnight. Yeah, ah, those were the days. Those were the days. And uh, that got, I think, got your reasonable base. And then things went pear-shaped for that channel. Oh boy, did they. Apparently. Oh. <laughs> it no wasn't, tea, no shade. But... Not, not all sweetness and light. There was trouble at the mill. And uh, so Dale ended up uh, escaping onto her own channel, Dale King's Mill, and uh, has... Uh, primarily been based around Greek myths, yeah. uh, but also dabbled in Dungeons and Dragons, which gave yeah. her a real kick when she got a call sweet. out by some big Dungeons and Dragons person. Yeah, um, Matt Colville, <laughs> uh, who I've not heard of. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Dale is always working on trying to get content and, 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 and also has other interests outside, including um, strange ideas around games and like spreadsheeting scenarios around superheroes I and do. worlds and world creation and so forth. Yes. So this, this idea for a game came up. And so now Dale can introduce me and why I'm involved in this. Hi, I'm Dale, uh, if you came from my channel. Hello, how are you? Um, this is my uncle, Uncle Graham. Not aunt. Yeah, no, this is my aunt, Uncle Graham. Um, uh, uncle Graham is, is a clever man who does a lot of clever things. This is his channel, by the way. Hi, this is, this is my uncle's YouTube channel. Um, he, he does videos on just all sorts of things, don't you? It's basically just like... Stuff I'm doing. You're like, I'm doing a thing, I may as well record it and put it up on the internet. And then um, refer back to it in five years when I can't remember what I did. Yeah. It's so, documenting, documenting what I did. Yeah, it's kind of like vlogging if vlogging was useful. Yes. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, it covers... There's, there's engineering type stuff, you, there's stuff where you've been working on cars, there's stuff where you've been building things for for the grandkids there's you know uh, programming things well i haven't now I, I haven't dabbled much into programming i've been thinking about whether i go into that well, it's a question of how diverse it, the channel gets but when i'm programming it'll be there yeah and certainly right now we're about to get into a little bit of coding yeah so that's that's something um but no uh, i i recently asked uncle graham i thought you know you know stuff about code and how code works um, if I wanted to make a video game, or video game seems like a strong word, uh, if I wanted to make a, a, computer a, game. a game on a computer um, and I needed it to do this thing, what would I do? And we ended up in a very in-depth conversation about... Um, I would say introductory. Okay, for me, in-depth. <laughs> um, I remember the phrase spaghetti code. Uh -huh. I remember top-down. Uh -huh. I remember... Not general much. concepts. <laughs> Other than that, I remember general concepts rather than terminology. But uh, it was a very interesting conversation. And then at some point, we just sort of thought, why don't we put this on a video? So here we are. That's what the video is. Welcome. And, and be impressed with the genius of the never-ending... This is a genius idea of mine. You can't see on this framing, but it's there's, a, there's like a hanger hook that usually hangs an artistic drapery. Um, but I've hung a roll of butcher's paper from it. Genius. 
Not anyway. just a pretty face. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, so there we go. That's good. That's good introducing. So what I said to Dale was mm. that she needed to think through the scenario of the game to distill it out a bit. Uh, so that was, a, that was a starting point. Now, I will do some uh, disclaimers. I am a... I have worked professionally as a computer programmer for the last 20 years in a uni job. But the work that I do is about making pieces of equipment work. You know, I need a spectrum, I to collect a spectrum or I need, you know, a switch to switch or a valve to operate or something. So I am not even claiming to be a gaming expert. I know that there are uh, a lot of platforms for creating games that are really targeted for the creative person that don't require or try not to require you to know a lot of code. Mm -hmm. But if you ask me what yeah. to do, yeah. I, I only know what I know. Yeah. And I have ideas of what, I, I, well, I think it'd be an interesting thing mm -hmm. to look at how I would go about doing this. So I'm not making any claims to anyone mm -hmm. that this is a tutorial on the right way to make games or, um, or whatever. I also, you know, I, I'm self-taught in a lot of stuff. I have worked professionally uh, as a programmer, um, but I don't claim to be the world's greatest programmer. Right. So I will share with you from what I know, and if any of you people want to put in comments that I'm an idiot, well, I'll, I'll cope. And if you're better at programming, um, then that's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll admit that. That's not a problem. So I'm, I'm just, this is what it is. Okay, but what, what it can serve as is that I'm a total noob mm. and you can, it, it's a video where you're just like explaining generally the basics of how to get started working out what Yeah, what do. I'm looking at is how do we take a concept mm. which you've now outlined, mm -hmm. well, we'll soon outline. Yeah, once, haven't done it yet. Once I've edited the video, <laughs> so that awkward edit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's about to it's come. It's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, you will explain to me how, how, how uh, your idea and what I'm, what I'm trying to do and what programming to me is. Mm -hmm. You have a way of, you have a language. You have a set of tools and that, that, those tools come with their strengths and their limitations. And, uh, and you are trying to take something in the real world and make it pretend to be the case on a totally different uh, language. Okay. So, so really, I, th I see programming really as um, translation. Mm -hmm. So you have the world out there that's easy to <coughs> like. Sorry. And, and then you have the computer programming uh, the options, and you have the computer's capacities. Mm -hmm. And you want one... You want to take that and translate it into something that's, that, that does a good enough job at representing, but is not the world. Right. So what we're going to start looking at is that process of how do we translate. So at work, if someone comes to me and they say, I need this. Just a second, I'm getting my bottle of water. My throat has decided now is the moment. <coughs> this is definitely staying in. Especially, That's just cruel. especially your back to the camera. That's just so rude. Yeah. Um, so it's that process of someone comes to me at work, and they've got something that they want to measure. Usually, you mm -hmm. know, they're going out. I work in atmospheric chemistry, and they've got they want to measure something, and they want to log something. They want to understand something. So they've got an idea, and then they need equipment mm -hmm. to do that. So you're, we're going to go through the same process. And, and so I'm just going to take it in the same way that I normally would. Right, so okay. this, is, this, is, this is to go on my channel. Yes. Uh, because it doesn't fit your channel. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but it's based on a question that you asked. It is. Based around, you've had an idea for a game. I have. I've had an idea for a game. Um, do you want me to just explain? Yes, I do. Okay, great. So um, it's basically this is gonna sound real nerdy. We're just gonna have to go with it. It's a fan game for a game. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, but the game itself that I want to make. Um, let me get my notes up. I wrote notes Ooh. and everything. Ooh la la. 
Um, so, basically, it would be, um, like, a visual choose-your-own-adventure kind of a setup, um, and the story of it, so that you get the vibe, alright, is that, um, so you're the captain of a space crew, it's a big crew, there's 12. We're going into a place where no one else has been here. Yeah, it's, it's completely <laughs> original, like, your mind will be blown. Oh, it's already Just blowing, alright, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, crew is big, there's 12 crew members. It's just going to be important for some of the things later. Um, and so as you go about your, your different like daily tasks, maintaining the ship, keeping things together, um, you are going to like make friends with some crew members and probably get on the wrong side of some crew members just through the course of conversation. Life happens. Life happens. But at the same time, two of the crew members are actually imposters. And they're looking to, to sabotage the mission and they're gonna start murdering crew members one by one. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Um, ideally, the imposters would be randomly selected so that, like, each time you play the game, you don't know who the imposters are. Well, that's a good thing, yes. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, and ideally, okay, again, this is like dream version of the game. The, the crew members to get murdered would also be sort of semi random, but like in my dream version, it would be like imposters are immune to murder, obviously. Um, also, like the top two people that you have affinity with don't get murdered, and the bottom two that you have that, that you have like the least affinity with also don't get murdered. So that way, you're keeping the most dramatic like friendships or enemy ships alive throughout the game and it's just the people that you didn't care about in the middle that are getting killed because then they get to serve the drama that way. Um, so the sabotages would be like preset events that happen at specific points during the story um, and the murders would probably happen at specific points as well but the details of the murder would be not predetermined, if that makes sense. So it would be like each possible murder has a predetermined thing, like this person was murdered in this place, but that would be randomly chosen, if that makes any sense. Um, and then at specific points during the game you would have the option to throw a character that you think is the imposter out the airlock, but you run the risk of throwing out an innocent crew member if you're wrong. So then, you know, there's that stuff. Mm. And then depending on a few key event choices, the ending the player gets would be different. So you would have like, the happy ending where you beat the imposters. You'd have the bad ending where the imposters win. You'd have the ending where because you didn't do because you never tried to get rid of the you never threw uh, anyone out the airlock and so the crew like mutiny against you because you're clearly not trying to save them or you know different endings based on your choices. And so like visually it would be basically like a lot of static images and be like still image of a location, still image of a character, and then just like menu kind of interfaces that you choose from in conversation in order to do that. Okay. I've written a list of what I think the the mechanics, the necessary mechanics that I've identified are. I don't know whether that's helpful. Well, let's stop on it. We, okay. we, All right. Uh, uh. Now, this is going to be weird because it has to be page at a time because you're going to have to pull it down at a page at a time unless you write from the bottom up. Oh, no. Yes, because you're adding it to the top. I don't I understand. Think of it as the credits. Yeah, no, that's all right. It's just the first idea is going to be at the bottom, and the last idea is going okay, to be at the top. Okay, so instead of writing top to bottom, I'm writing bottom to top. Okay, yes. I can do that. <laughs> all right. Okay, so we're writing big, aren't we? Yes, we are. Uh, uh, big dot point. Um, so, identified mechanics. Dialogue mechanics. So what are you referring to as mechanics? Um, well, I'm kind of using D&D &D terminology there. So mechanics are just like mechanisms of the things, like, Righto. you know, input-output, I guess. Like, Righto. it's like you want this thing to function. Right. Probably writing on the wall. Oh, I'm not. Mm -hmm. Also, it doesn't matter if it's covered. Um, okay, anyway. <laughs> um, so dialogue by dialogue, I mean like the 
computer has a character on it and it offers you a piece of like pre-written thing that so, they are saying. Subpoint. Character. Characters. Talking. Is that an ownership apostrophe? It is. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm writing text. I would like to point out I am not a pedant. <laughs> How dare you. I've written text here because I'm not um, planning to implement like voice lines. Yeah, and, and I think that's a good place to start. For you first, have a crack. That's a very good idea. All right. Um, I've got... Uh, this needs a better title. What I've called it right now is Lynchpin Events Change Tracks, by which I mean there will be some specific... Pivotal, pivotal moments. moments. Yeah, pivotal moments. That's a good idea. Ah, pin... There's something on the wall back there. Moments. <laughs> that we're not allowed to look at. No, we're not allowed to look at it. It doesn't exist. <laughs> okay, pivotal moments. This is really great writing. Wait till you see I mine. I hope it's visible on there. <laughs> okay. Um, victim selection. All right. I've just realized that I, while writing this, would you believe, because I'm looking at a, at a dot point list that already existed, I started with the first point on the list, and then I swapped to the second last, oh. because I was on the second bottom <laughs> thing. My brain did a very strange thing just then. Thankfully, it's a dot point list, so it doesn't really matter that much. Um, a reply menu. What for me? My genius plan is falling apart. Um, a reply menu, as in you get your dialogue prompt from the character and you are given a, a menu, menu of select options them. to reply. Yep. Uh, um, okay, I want point change values. Uh, that are connected to the reply menu. So like what you choose on the reply menu has an equivalent point change for your relationship with that character. Oh, so, so you've like, got a score for yeah, the character. Yeah, so it's like, um, you know, you're keeping track. So like if you give the silly response to the silly person, you get like plus five or whatever. If you give the serious response, you get negative five and it just keeps a running total for that character. Um, that'll change over time. So I'm going to put a little arrow here because they're connected. Oh! <gasps> Here we go. Um, running tally. Affinity. That's what I'm calling it. Affinity. And that's also connected to these. Um, and also dead labels which probably shouldn't be the top of the list. Um, just because... Well, we start at the bottom, we're going up, because this is going to scroll that's down. That's true. This is at the bottom. Because um, I figure, and I could be wrong in this, but it seems like it would be easier once a crewmate is dead, rather than having to plot out every possible version of reality where that character is dead. Um, it seems, in my mind, that it would be easier to like apply a label that says this character is dead, and then just write in a little thing that says when determining this, don't include dead characters. Does that make sense? Mm. Yep. So those are the things that I've identified. All right. So, do you recall me using certain terminology when we first spoke? I remember you saying objects a lot. So we got there were objects. There were okay. I remember that there were objects and that they have attributes. Yep. And then you can like couch within objects, sub-objects. So you could have, I remember we talked about um, transportation, vehicles, boat. Right. Right, because like transportation will have some particular set of attributes that applies to everything within that. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, vehicles is a subset that will have its own things that don't apply to all transportation, but apply to all vehicles. And then boat would have things that apply to all boats, but not to all vehicles. So you've got parent and child. <coughs> Classes. Right. So, 
uh, at this at this stage, you start to decide: should this be? And so the terminology is top functional, top down functional decomposition, which mm -hmm. is what you partly remember. I definitely remembered the whole thing. I get all the points. And object oriented. Right. And there are the object oriented was the fashion when I was doing my training. There are uh, arguments against it and whatever, and there are new world people that are that are trying to, you know, and neural networks and things like that don't don't play that game. Right. But you're stuck with what I know, and I'm not a neural network expert or anything like that. But that is fine by me because in the previous conversation that we had, where we were talking about object oriented, it sounded to me like object oriented was very similar in a lot of ways to the structure of D and D character creation. Because in D&D, you're like, you need to build a character. So here's your character. Within that character, you have, um, you know, your class. Within that class, in 5e, you have 5th um, fifth, fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons. Um, you have subclasses, and you get different things from each of those, but it's like couched within the others. So that really sounds like it might map well. Yeah. Now, do you remember my description of the primary difference between if you go object-oriented and top-down? I remember you sort of saying that in top-down Function, functional decomposition, decomposition um, that it's it's very you start with what the first thing is, so you would be like yeah, external dentist's office. I mean, it's like a script. Okay. You, you would be like, here's the first thing that happens. You kind of got and the then, idea, and then but you kind of now there's the key so thing. So then you have to go to the next. Then that calls this thing. So then you have to write that code for that thing, and then you have to, yeah. and then it goes. It's also called procedural programming. Okay. Top down functional decomposition or procedural. Okay. And remember, it's all about verbs. I like that you chose to call it top down functional decomposition when it could just be procedural. Well, top down one functional. One has one word. One of those titles has one word. <laughs> and and the other one has has three words that all mean something and, and all describe it to some extent. It starts at the top. Do, are you and going it goes top, top down, down is one word? Yeah, right. I will. <laughs> what? This. No. Okay, so a cutting decomposition? It, it, it's, it's, well, right, we'll say. Is that the it's, problem it's with top down functional labels. decomposition? <laughs> is that it decomposes? Well, yes, sort of. Um, so it's not a problem. Okay. It's, there's, there's times when procedural or top down works. Mm -hmm. And you also use it within uh, classes. Yeah, it's certainly the only um, type of coding I've ever done before. It's, it's the place where most people start. And it starts off by saying, what am I getting, What do I want to do? And you say, I want to do this thing. And so you write a function, because it's top-down, functional decomposition. So you start at the top, and then you write functions that decompose the program. Yeah. I mean, Call the, location dentist's office. Maybe... <laughs> maybe um, uh, we could say that where most people start isn't even at that point because right. it starts, people start by writing just a line after a line after a line. Right. And everything is, I do this, do this, do this. And then what you realise after a while is, oh, I'm doing this all the time. And I'm doing it this time, but I'm doing it with this person. Now I'm doing it with that person. And now I'm doing it. And you realise there's a pro programmatic, way of, programmatic way of doing that. And that is, I create a function. And this function is called, and you tell that function, do it with this person. So now whenever you want to do that, you just call the function and you say Fred, and the mm -hmm. next time you say Marjorie, and the next time you say Pete. Um, and, but you only write the code once, and it gets, it gets called over and over again. So you write a generic do this thing. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where the function comes down. So there's a function, and you write a, write a function, and then you say do it. Yeah. So everything is do, do, do. And so when you... Oh, I do remember you saying this. Yes, it was I did. verbs versus nouns. Exactly. Ah. We're getting there. So, um, so that's the thing. Verbs on, on top-down functional, everything is what am I going to do? Right. So the name of all your functions in, in, in that circumstance are, you know, initialise these things, set these things up. Now we're going to start playing the game. Now we're going to, you know, and you go down and then, and you just, you just work your way from the top. Mm -hmm. And then you keep saying, well, what do we do now? What do we do now? What do we do now? And, and you end up at the bottom. You go, well, that's everything I need to do. And it can come back up. So you end up with a structure. So you start up with... Well, we need to pull down. How high is this? Oh, that's, that's all right. We don't need to break it down. So it's 
do something. So you're writing. This is what my writing does look like on whiteboards. That says do, do, do something, do. right? Do Sunday. <laughs> and then it's uh, in initialize a bunch of things. And then, in your case, play game. And then it's um, finalize. Oh. All right? And then you go down here and you go, uh, you know, you, you need to initialize your characters. All right? And then you say, oh, to do that, I need to read some files. All right? Right. And then once I've read the files, I now go in here and I, you know, I, and I do the next thing and I do the next thing. And so the program right. goes, you come in at this point and you go down this arm until you get down to this point. Right. And then ding, 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 ding. And you go, okay. And then there's another thing and you, you initialize another set of things. There's, right. your, there's your world or something like that. Right. And then that, you got to read some files. That's where the dentist's office would be. Right. So you start at the top and you run the way down and then back up and down. It does all of these ones. Then it comes back up and now it does this and it does all of those ones. And then it comes back up here and it goes, all right, I've done all that. So the, the, the next thing is we come down here and we play the game. And we select um, scene. Right. Right. And then from that we might have, you know, and there's a, there's a few things you have to do to select the scene. Oh, okay. Right. I'm seeing a problem that could arise because I just said the dentist's office is over here in world. But then I could see how a scene would also be called dentist's office. And I imagine that they would need to have different names. Well, yeah, you have to, things. you have to, you can't have two things. Ambiguity doesn't work. So, uh, and then finally, you can see that this is, so you start at the top, and each of those is a function, and they decompose the problem. Right. And so, it is top-down, functional decomposition. Right. Procedural doesn't express all of that. But, this is all based on verbs. So the names that you choose for all of these are and verb, initialize, play the game, finalize it. You, that would actually usually be called initialize characters, in right. characters, so initialize world. Then this one selects Select. scenes. You know. Right. So all of this, everything you're thinking about is a verb. Right. And you decompose the problem from the top into right. that face like, all based on verbs. Now, how well does this work? Oh, perfect! Oh, yes! Right, now. I'm let's... so proud right now. <laughs> Object oriented. So this is um, top, down, functional, decomposition. Right? And we're still not writing on the wall. I spent ages picking text as I thought might not do. So now we're looking at object oriented. Right? Which I feel I can safely assume is about nouns. <laughs> this girl is genius. Object. So then I say we look at that description which is neatly down there. but. Mm -hmm. If we think about that, what are our objects? We're going to have a world, right? And that world is going to be made up of, you know, scenes maybe. Mm -hmm. We have to come up with the best words, but mm -hmm. so, and a scene isn't a world. It's a, it's a, well, it's part of a world. Right. But a world is made up of a lot of scenes. Yeah. But is, is a scene a world? No. No. So there, there's an object here, and that object owns scenes. Right. It has scenes. If there's an is-a and has-a right. uh, in, in object-oriented programming. So if a scene is a world, then it's, you inherit from it, uh -huh. and you say, yep, yeah, I want a scene, and it is a world. But in this case, if a world has scenes... It has a scene. Uh -huh. Then uh, this is this is another object, and it's not it's not inheriting from it. It, it doesn't. It, right. It's not of that same 
a subclass of that. So Right, right, right. Oh, I'm with it. Okay. So a world has characters. It has scenes. Scenes have rooms. Right. Characters have dialogue. Right, 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 right. Okay? So what we what we're trying to do is we're looking at this and we want to identify objects that we can have. So we can start off by saying we have a class, right? That's a class, and it's called world, and it has inside of this world, it has scenes, it has characters, right? And these are are all um, properties, right? right? So it has scenes and it has characters, but then that world. Uh, so so we, we go there. Then we say, let's look at this. Look at this character. Yeah. Right. So we have a class. Right. And it's character. And it has things like might have a name. It has a score for something or another. It has, you know, there's these things that it has, and they're called properties. And then it has a character can talk. And a character can move. And a character can act. Right? And they are methods. Oh, okay. Right? And, and you can think of that as it owns properties and it does things. It owns, okay. an so object owns and does. Because, because we've been all noun so far, scene, character, score, name, and then talk, move, act, or suddenly we've got some verbs. Yes, but objects do things. Yeah. So I'm not saying that, obviously, if, if at no point in time does anything happen, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's a painting! But what you do then is you say, I will create a class character. I will create a class world. And I will create a class, class scenes, scenes, maybe. You know, just exploring the idea. Mm -hmm. um, now, this is the first look at it. Mm -hmm. And it's only when you start trying to cut some code and you run a couple of tests that sometimes these initial ideas blow up in your face. Right. You go, oh, yeah, of course, that's not really mm -hmm. a good object because it doesn't work. Or, oh, geez, how could I miss that object? This, there's this thing that I need all the time. Right. And, but this is where, you, you know, you've got to start here. Yeah. And what, this is the translation. This is where we're talking about we take your idea, mm -hmm. which, you know, um, it, it plays out in certain ways. But computers can talk this stuff. And there are computing languages that are based and built on these. And you can also do this. Now, the language that we've, I'm suggesting, and I'm only suggesting it because, one, it's free. Two, there's good free tools. Mm -hmm. It's open source. So if you go into a lot of these things where they, you know, they, they're designed for gaming, you can get to a certain point and it's a really, uh, you can make something that's really unsatisfying for free just so that they get you hooked. Right. And then, once they've got you, oh, you want to do that? Now it's Oh, a well, now you're really. going to have to cough up 300 bucks. Right. So, I'm a stinge. Right. And same. Oh, same. Hard same. <laughs> um, and I'm a stinge at work. Even, like, uh, at work, there are tools out of the box. Uh, National Instruments have a whole set of tools, like mm -hmm. you can buy an, a National Instruments instrument and they've got a, uh, a programming language, um, and you can buy that. And if mm -hmm. anything that you, you know, you, you buy those national instruments will work under this language. Mm -hmm. But it was tens of thousands of dollars. Right. <laughs> and if you're in industry and you want something to be transportable, you know, if you're a BOC or a big um, a manufacturing company or something, you don't want to have something that you only, only one person understands. Right. You want something that there are industry standards. 
And so that's, that's where it's worth spending the money. Right. I do stuff that's really one-off. And, uh, you know, because it's research that I work in, you know, by definition, you have to be doing... I know you're doing sort of things that people are doing, but you're doing it in a way that hasn't been done before right. or it's not research. Right. So for me, the, the National Instrument thing didn't work. So Python <laughs> um, was... I, 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 I um, ended up with, on Python. I've used other languages before that, but Python was where I ended up mm-hmm. at the moment. Um, and Python will work really well with top-down, mm-hmm. and it'll work well with object-oriented. So we've got a choice. Hey. But honestly, my, my go-to place is always object. And the reason for that is, if you go in here and you go, actually, I've got another idea for a game. And this game is kind of similar, but not really. Then you go, oh, okay. So we, to do something is a, you know, play a different game, and then initialize. And there's still characters, but the characters, you know, you've got to initialize them in a slightly different way, or, or, or something like that. You know, there's, but it means you have to go to, to to create that or edit the thing. You have to go here and here and here and here, and you have to touch everything and, all and the way could, through. You could miss something. Well, it just means it's a lot of work, and it also means you're going to create more bugs. Right. Whereas if you say, actually, if I do this right, if I come up with a really smart character, that character can be played in any number of games. And in Python, you just go hash include character. Right. And you've got the code written for character, and it's like you've written it. When you write hash include, it's exactly the same as writing all the code... By the time it ends up in the binary code that runs, right. that executes, um, actually Python's interpreted, so but... Wait, okay, wait, I just had a thought. Yes. Because computers speak binary. Yes. 